क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम ईकेडा हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू ईकेडा टुडे वी विल सी प्रॉब्लम नंबर 7 ऑन थेविनिन्स एंड नॉर्टन्स थ्योरम विद डिपेंडेंट सोर्सेस यू कैन सी दैट दिस क्वेश्चन इज obtain the nortons equivalent of the following circuit and this is the circuit which is given now what is nortons equivalent that means we have to rearrange this circuit in such a way that it must have one total current source then one resistance in parallel across this a and b branch so it is the same procedure we will find the thevenin's voltage across these points a and b then we will find the nortons equivalent current across those points a and b also we will find rn that is nortons equivalent resistance that means resistance is voltage upon current by using that formula we will find that resistance and then we will draw that equivalent circuit also so let us start with step number 1 that is calculation of vth here they have asked us to find voltage vth between these points a and b it has been given in the question that you have to find a nortons equivalent circuit out of this so for vth we will have this one loop second loop and if you can make this as third loop just by a dotted line so we'll draw another diagram on the another page i have drawn the equivalent circuit for calculation of vth now you can see there is one current source here and one more current source which is dependent current source here also which depends on value of vx it is vx divided by 4 so where is this vx vx can be found here now see current is entering into a negative terminal of this resistance which is given in the question so we can write vx voltage is resistance time current so it will be 2 into i1 with minus sign because it is entering from negative terminal so it is resistance into current that is minus 2 into i1 so this is our one conclusion next see this 10 ampere source is going above i2 is going above i1 is coming down so this is the condition of super mesh so we can write i2 minus i1 as 10 amperes also if you see here well this current i3 is zero because this is open circuit between terminals a and b so here i can write i3 minus i2 from this second super mesh we can write i3 minus i2 equal to vx by 4 now out of this this i3 is zero so it is going to be minus of i2 equal to vx divided by 4 but vx is minus 2 into i1 so it is minus 2 into i1 divided by 4 or i can write this minus minus will become positive i2 is 0.5 into i1 so after solving these equations we got i1 and i2 as minus 20 and minus 10 respectively with ampere sign or ampere unit now we will go for vth loop so we have got this value of i2 i3 is already zero now if you apply kvl to this third loop suppose i apply kvl in clockwise direction mesh analysis i2 then i will have a minus of vth well but i cannot do it right now here in loop 3 because you can see there is a condition of super mesh there is a current source 
So what I have to do, I have to apply it to this entire loop, means starting from this point, then here, and then going from A to B. So if you can just point it out, by KVL to Supermesh, so let us start from here, then it is going to be minus 2 into I1, then it is minus 3 into I1 and minus 5 into I2 minus VTH equal to 0. I am going through this path, starting from this register, then second one, third one and the voltage source, nothing in between because this is the condition of Supermesh. So this is the value of uh, VTH that we get is 150 volts and hence we are done with step number one. Now to calculate Norton's current, we have to short branch AB. So we short this branch AB now. So, here we have written all the values and I1, I2, I3, three currents in three loops and we know that if I want to find IN, I need to find what is I3. So, again, I will apply here I2 minus I1 equal to 10. Here it is going to be now I3 minus I2 equal to Bx by 4. So, first we will write in the second and third loop, See, this current is going above, I3 also is going above, so I3 is greater. So, I3 minus I2 is going to be Vx by 4. Now, the question comes, what is Vx? Vx is nothing but voltage across this 2 ohm resistor and this current is entering into negative terminal. So, Vx is minus 2 into I1 as we have written previously. So we got equation number 2 also, let us go to loop number 3. Well, we actually got equation by using loop 2 and loop 3. So instead of just going to loop number 3, because this is the condition of supermesh, what we will consider is the entire loop, which we considered for calculation of VTH. So starting from this point, let us give some name to this, let us give some name C and D. So C, D, A and B, like this, clockwise. So let us go clockwise across A, B, C, D. So let us apply KVL to this entire loop A, B, C, D. So what we will get is minus 2 into I1, then minus 3 into I1, minus 5 into I2 and so on. So third equation also has been written. So equation 1, equation 2 and equation 3 we will solve these equations to get specifically value of I3. So these are the values that we got and as I told you we are interested in I3 because I3 is equal to IN and that value is 7.5 amperes. Let us now go for step number 3, calculation of Rn. Substitute the value of Vth as well as In. In is 7.5 and Vth will refer, Vth is 150 volts and that gives us 20 ohms. So you got the Rn value, it is Norton's equivalent resistance as 20 ohms. And here we come across the last step that is calculation and 
We are done with calculation by drawing the Norton's equivalent circuit. So we'll draw that circuit on the next page and you can refer that it is 7.5 amperes. And Norton's equivalent resistance, we got 20 ohms. So Norton's equivalent current, we can call it as IN, and this is nothing but RN. And across AB, we have simplified this circuit. And that is the end of our question. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda, and please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.